following program is a production of WLRN Public Television. to have a connection with nature, with my food, with the earth, with what was growing on um, naturally. To me, there's nothing more miraculous and amazing than what's going on outside. Seeing a honeybee pollinating a flower, seeing insects, seeing animals, seeing the trees grow and bloom, I wanted to have a connection with that. And so, I started keeping bees, and I completely fell in love with bees. I was allowed to have three beehives, and then needed another place to put more bees as I started accumulating and splitting hives, and then it just sort of grew and exploded. I had a, a, a hunger and a thirst for all the knowledge about bees. Honeybees are very important. They're the pollinators that man has chosen to do the busy work in agriculture. They go out and forage for food, they pollinate as they go, and they come back to this box every night. This is full box is full of honey. And that's what most backyard beekeepers want, is a nice honey harvest. Right now, we're every other Saturday um, actively teaching backyard beekeeping and advanced beekeeping. But during a week, I'm all over the place. Private beekeeping, I do beekeeping lessons. People pay me to come out and help them with their beehives to manage their colonies. You always want to make sure of three things when you go into the beehive. Do they have food, brood, which is evidence of your queen, and room to grow? These are really, really trendy right now. You, know, you see on the cover of Time magazine, you're seeing in the news, you're seeing in the newspaper, everywhere people are talking about the problems that honeybees are facing. And with that sort of awareness about bees, you have a huge uprising of people who want to do their part and are planting gardens and or want to keep bees in their backyard. They want to do their part, and so they'll say, well, I'll create a home for bees. I'll be keeping my yard. We have a lot of surveys coming back that are saying how the bees are dying and we're having all these problems. And it's true, it's much harder to be a beekeeper now than it was like in the 1970s when kind of all these things started. We have varroa mites, we have American fowl brood, we have all these viruses that come from those varroa mites, we have chalk brood, we have all these kinds of diseases and pests that really make it hard to be a beekeeper. So you kind of have to include all these things that can really affect the beehive. Do you guys have a smoker, right? Start on that bench with that single noob. The smoke does a couple of different things. We smoke the hive, and it makes the bees gorge on honey and nectar inside. So they immediately start gorging, they fill their tummies, and bees with full tummies are a little happier, and they also can't sting as easily. You know, when their tummy's nice and full, um, they can't bend their back end around quite as easily to sting you. Doesn't mean you won't get stung, but it definitely calms them down in that way, because it makes them nice and full. Backyard beekeeping really came into play in 2012. Basically what it does is it allows a beekeeper to keep a beehive on their property. So with that being said, we've had a huge increase of beekeepers throughout the state that are registered. We're up to 4,000 beekeepers now. Uh, and, you know, 10 years ago we had 650. So while the bees might be having an issue, we're having more beekeepers, we're having more hives. We're up to about 450,000 hives in the state of Florida. We're the fifth in the nation when it comes to honey production. We go to about 23, 27 states each year. So we're sending out permits to all these different places for apples, berries, almonds, of course. A lot of these hobbyists will tell me, oh, Caitlin, I only want three hives. I'm not going to have any more than that. I come back next year, they have 20. I come back the year after that, they have 50. You know, they keep going because they end up, they find out they love it. I've had multiple beekeepers quit their full-time jobs and become a full-time commercial beekeeper. 
giving somebody or selling somebody a box that can have up to 100,000 bees in it at any one given time, that comes with a lot of responsibility. This is a box full of stinging insects. And so in order to sort of feel like we're doing our part in being responsible, it's important that when you encourage people to have boxes of free-flying, come-as-they-go, stinging insects in their backyard, that you're helping them to do it safely. When I open the beehive, nothing else matters. I am super focused on what's going on, and I think that my heart rate evens out. If I'm having a stressful day, all of that melts away, and the only thing that matters is what's going on inside of the hive. And so I have sort of grounded myself. It's very meditative for me, and so it's, it's, it's changed me on a personal level because I have much more peace when I'm actually working deep. The bees start working from the time the sun comes up to the time the sun goes down, and so you know, I do tell people it's a good thing the sun goes down, otherwise my kids might never see me. <laughs>